Hey guys, Yuri here, and uh, today I want to answer a, just quickly answer a question I had on Facebook the other day, and someone was asking me about BMI. Uh, is this is BMI using BMI? Is it a good indicator of your actual body fat uh, percentage? Quick answer is no, and the reason for that is because BMI only takes into account your height and your weight. Okay, so um, you know if you've been to the doctor, you know pediatrician, whatever it is, from when you're young, you'll notice that they chart your weight and your height, and they kind of put you into this category based on if you're, you know, X heights, here's what you should weigh in. If you don't weigh this, then you're overweight, or you're underweight, or whatever it is. Well, that's not really, it's not It's not a very accurate tool to use, especially as, as an adult. Uh, I don't use it, I don't recommend it, because let's say you're 200 pounds at 10% body fat. According to BMI, you know, if you're not, unless you're like seven feet tall, you'd most likely be considered overweight, because it doesn't take into consideration your body fat percentage. So. What you want to do instead is, you know, if BMI is saying that if you have two individuals who have, are both 200 pounds and they both are, let's say, five foot eight, what's the difference, right? One obviously looks very different from the other, perhaps. But let's say one is a football player. The other person is a sedentary person who's never worked out. They're still 200 pounds. They're the same height. BMI will not tell you the difference. They'll, BMI will basically say they're both overweight, okay? So what we need to understand is that this football player might be 10% body fat, okay? This other person might be 30% body fat, and we need to account for that by actually physically testing for body fat with different measures. Now, the most advanced measures that most of us have don't have access to are things like Bod Pod, Underwater Weighing, DEXA. Those are, you know, most universities use those for different tests. But as the average person, you can go to your gym and you can use it like bioelectrical impedance, which is... Uh, it's like a handheld device that sends a current through your body and because water, it conducts in water, muscle contains more water than fat does, you get a general breakdown. That's pretty accurate and for the most part, as long as you're hydrated, it's a pretty quick and ininvasive, non-invasive measure to see where your body fat percentage is at. Otherwise, uh, the good old skin caliper method you can use, but it's not as accurate and it's a lot more time intensive and then you have to put all these equations in and it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So. Go with the biological impedance, it's really, really straightforward to use. Uh, a lot of scales now even have that option where you just stand on the scale, it'll give you a body fat percentage based on, you know, just standing on it. Understand that they're not 100% accurate, there's gonna be, you know, a couple of percent of variance, uh, but as long as you keep the variables standard from one testing to the, nether, to, to the other, like time of day, hydration level, all of that stuff, you'll at least get a good sense of how you're moving along you know, every four to six weeks, all right? So that's the answer to uh, is BMI useful? A quick, uh, short and simple of it is no, it's not. And if you've got any more questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Talk to you soon.